Good morning, Region 10 friends, and welcome back. I hope you had a relaxing summer, although I understand how eager you all are to get back into the routine of the school year and to let go of those lazy days of summer. As Region 10's Teacher of the Year, I have the honor of addressing you this morning with some hopefully inspiring words. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Melangonis, and I'm a social studies teacher at Harbor Middle School. I began my teaching career in 2004 as a fifth grade teacher at Lake Garda. I moved up to Harbor in 2007 when I continued to teach fifth grade until 2012 when I took the opportunity to move to sixth grade to teach social studies. Besides teaching social studies, one of my greatest passions is cooking. I happen to inherit my love of cooking from the best around, my grandmother. I can remember standing by her side as she made the most incredible apple pie for me each year for my birthday. As I grew older, I wanted to learn everything I could about cooking and baking. I subscribe to food magazines, I read books about famous chefs, I collect cookbooks, I research new recipes online, and I never miss an episode of Top Chef. Needless to say, I love food. I was able to expand my love of cooking and learning through my travels this summer to Italy. While there, I enrolled in a cooking school called Cook in Tuscany. For six days, our group of 14 people will learn to cook authentic Italian dishes from a nonna. We were brought to the markets to buy fresh ingredients and then to use them to make our lunches. Some of the dishes we made were homemade pasta and ravioli, stuffed zucchini flowers, eggplant parmesan, herb stuffed chicken, biscotti, panna cotta, and gelato. Each recipe that I made, each conversation that I had, each trip to the market reminded me of the simplicity of Italian cooking. In order to make fresh pasta, you need flour, eggs, and salt. That's it. I left Italy feeling inspired to share my newly acquired knowledge and a reignited passion for cooking good, simple food. My experience of cooking in Italy allowed me to reflect on my other passion, teaching. Good cooking and good teaching are similar. At the heart of cooking is a recipe, and the best recipes from Italy were the most simple. So I started to think about what would be a simple recipe for a successful school year. The first ingredient of a good school year is being positive. While in Italy, I was nervous about making gnocchi. I had tried and failed to make gnocchi in the past and thought this time would yield the same results. Although I struggled and I never did get the hang of rolling the dough off the edge of the fork, I had a great time failing because everyone around me was singing and dancing and truly enjoying the experience. Having a positive attitude is infectious. Your positive attitude will motivate and inspire those around you. This year, as difficult as it might seem, strive to be the staff member with a smile on your face during a faculty meeting held on the Monday right after April vacation. Be the teacher who is so excited about a lesson that your students go home and share their learning with their families. Although it's easy for us as adults to focus on what goes wrong, let's make a conscious effort to find the good in what we all do each day and celebrate it. Because at the end of a long day, we should all be able to sit back, relax, reflect on our success, and enjoy our view. The second ingredient is creating a supportive environment, not only for your students, but for your colleagues as well, through cooperation and communication. Our cooking group in Italy consisted of six groups of strangers from Australia, London, California, Idaho, and Maryland. We had to work together to support each other in order to create our meals. Having a similar experience cooking and learning together bonded us in a very special way. I've been fortunate over my years here at Region 10 to have colleagues and teammates who are more than just friends, they're family. I rely on them to help me craft a difficult email or to provide advice on how to make a lesson out of the textbook more exciting or to edit my Teacher of the Year essays. I try to offer the same support in return 
Our colleagues are a reminder that we're not alone in this world of teaching and that someone else can relate to the crazy challenges that we face each day. Besides that, these friends allow us to have fun. I actually look forward to Monday mornings when I can laugh with my teammates over our weekend stories and shenanigans. The simplest and most important ingredient of our teaching is our connection with our students. Cooking allows me to feel connected to my family members, both past and present. My boys and I love to comb through Nana's recipes to make a dish that she made for my grandfather. And even though my grandparents have passed away, cooking these recipes makes me feel closer to them. The connections we make with our students are just as powerful. When we form connections with our kids, the more receptive they'll be to the learning process. Through our connections, we build trusting, supportive environments. It's important to remember that no one in this room entered the profession of teaching so that they could create SLOs or analyze data or complete paperwork. We all teach because of the students. Positive teacher, student, connections motivate students and teachers. The more connected we feel to our classes, the more effort is put into creating meaningful lessons that allow our students to create and discover. These positive connections build trust with our students. When our kids trust us as teachers, risks are taken, inquiry is present, and independence and confidence is built. So this year, I challenge you to form meaningful connections with your students. Share your stories with them and allow them to share their stories with you. I promise that the connections you build with your students will be mutually beneficial and rewarding because if our students are happy and healthy and respectful and responsible, the learning will come. In conclusion, a good school year will require three simple ingredients. Exhibiting a positive attitude, cultivating a supportive environment, and forming meaningful connections with our students. Now since Region 10 policy prohibits me from bringing food for all of you, it's only fair that I share one of my favorite recipes from Italy, a bread and tomato soup called Papa al Pomodoro. This simple dish is one that I had throughout my travels in Italy, and although uncomplicated, it's totally satisfying. I hope that you'll try to make this comforting dish and it'll serve as a reminder of the simple and basic elements of our teaching. Thank you Region 10 for honoring me as your Teacher of the Year and thank you for your time and attention today. Cheers to a great school year.